hadith basically have two parts. One is called isnad, and uh, <clears throat> plural is asanid, and the other is called matin, uh, plural is matin. Um, the isnad is really the ch chain of narrators for the hadith, and that is all the people. It, the chain has to be linked from the Prophet وسلم, all the way. So if Abu Huraira relates a hadith, he will say, Abu Huraira says, I heard this from the Messenger of Allah. Or another person may say, I heard this from Abu Huraira, who says he heard this from the Messenger of Allah. Or you may have a chain that says, I heard this from Abbas, who said he heard it from Abu Bakr, who said he heard it from Abu Huraira, who said he heard it from the Prophet وسلم. So that is what's called a chain of narrators. Every single person in that chain uh, makes up what is called the isnad. And so every hadith has to be linked back directly to the Prophet. It cannot be that, you know, Abu Huraira says, you know, I heard from someone who said that they heard the Prophet say so, 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 so. But I can't remember the name of that person. Then that's a problem. So it has to be, all the names have to be listed. And uh, this is what is called the isnad. So whenever they write hadith, they will always write uh, the whole chain. Sometimes for the sake of brevity, you may see a hadith book in which they will just put the last person who, who heard it directly from the prophet. They will say Abu Huraira said, and they won't list all the previous chain because of the, the length of the, the chains can be very long sometimes. And the matin, I like to think of it as the matter or the meat of the hadith, the content of what the hadith is actually saying. So those are the two essential parts that makes up a hadith. And so when you're quoting hadith, generally, a lot of times we just quote the hadith itself for the sake of brevity that the Prophet Wasallam said so, so, so. And we may not include the chain that, you know, um, of where the hadith came from. Uh, and that is to make it easy for speeches and the layman, but for students of knowledge, they usually, when they are memorizing hadith, they actually memorize both the, the chain and the hadith itself. So they may say something like this, Anabi ibn Umar radiallahu anhumah call caller Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that uh, the son of Umar said that he heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you know, um, said, and then they would mention the hadith. So they will always keep the chain connected to the, um, the hadith itself. Uh, hadith are important for many reasons. Let me just give a couple. Uh, in order to understand the Quran properly, if you don't have the benefit of the hadith, because the Prophet's life was basically a demonstration of the Quran. He came to, to show us how to live by the Quran. As, as his wife said, he was like a walking Quran. So the Prophet ﷺ, his life is a demonstration of how you apply those rulings and laws and all the stuff in the Quran. Uh, how do you give life to it? How is it expressed by a human being? And so when we look at the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, we get to understand a little better about the Quran. It provides details for the rituals because in the Quran, Allah does not go into detail about how the rituals are to be performed. Allah may say, well, is salah and establish salah, but he will not describe to you how you must pray, how much rakah, which is what type of salah. There you have to go to the hadith. And so in the hadith, you will hear the Prophet Wasallam giving the details for those rituals of fasting and zakah and so on. Also the laws that are laid out, we have to understand the nuanced, ways of how you apply them, the context, hadith give you that. Hadith also allows us to have a moral ideal in terms of understanding the overall concept of what is trying, what we are trying to do as Muslims and what is Islam trying to do and establish. It is also, hadith is considered the second source of Islam. And that is the Quran is the most authentic source, but the, the second source of laws and regulations is the the hadith. And of course, we learned last week that some verses of the Quran have asbab al-nuzul, 
There are certain contexts and certain incidents that takes place that triggers an ayah to be revealed, and those are found in the hadith. 